What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and today we're discussing the cache control headers on the server and how the browsers are handling it. And specifically, we're reading a beautiful article written around five years ago by Jake, uh, what's his name, last name, by Jake Archibald or Archibald, maybe I butchered your name, sorry Jake. Uh, He's a developer advocate on Google Chrome and the kind of, he's uh, one of the hosts on uh, a very interesting show on YouTube called The 203, the, un, the non-authoritative uh, show, uh, podcast, video uh, with Surma. Uh, it's really, uh, if you're interested in the in front end and how to deal with JavaScript and tips and tricks, uh, he's your guy. He's your guy. So, yeah, he's on the Google Chrome team, and uh, he absolutely loves his cats, if you follow him on Twitter. And he wrote in this beautiful article, Caching Best Practices and Max is Gotchas. There's a lot of gotchas when it comes to caching, and we talked about many times on this channel. Caching is the worst thing. Caching is the worst thing to deal with when there is a bug related to it, right? This is like the worst thing how to find the bug related to cache, how to invalidate the cache. One of the most difficult problem a computer science to solve. So cache control, if you don't know guys, it's a property that the server sets to tell the client how fresh this content is, how long should it cache it, should it cache it or not, when should it check with the server to come back uh, to, to check the values, all this stuff. These are very detailed things. All right, let's read the article. There are three patterns here that I want to go through. The first pattern that he explains is immutable content, long max edge. So here's some content that you have that you know that it's going to change, but like a JavaScript file or CSS, but you make it immutable such that once you publish a file, let's say script version one.js, then you cannot update this file. Sorry. Once you reference it in your HTML, you cannot update it. If you want to update it, you create a new one. That's how immutability works. You never update the same file. So that, that means if someone has served an old page, they will all have the same version, essentially. What you do is you version your stuff here. So, and here you can put as long as of a, as a max age as possible. So here, in this case, you can put it for a year or two. They were expired because, hey, it's immutable. That's the safest way to do things. So here's, let's go through the example here. The content of this URL never changes. Therefore, the browser CDNs can cache this resource for a year without problem. Cached content younger than max age seconds can be used without consulting the server. Right? So if you cached in the client, whether the browser or curl or your C sharp HTTP library, you can safely cache this without checking with the server as long as you don't exceed the max age, obviously. So let's go through the scenario, the communication that Jake have here. Hey, the page says, this is the page con communicating with the cache. Hey, cache, I need script version 1.js, styles version 1.css, and cats version 1.jpg. The cache says, I got nothing. How about you, server? Because it's a fresh thing, right? We never actually hit it. The server says, okay, here you go. By the way, cache, these are fine to use for like a year. <laughs> the cache says, thanks. And the page says, cheers. So the page now has all this content. And the cache have access to these three files. Script version 1, script ver stars version 1, the CSS, and cats version 1, the JPEG. The next day here, the page comes in and says, hey, I need script version 2.js. So this indicates that the page has refreshed with a brand new version of itself, essentially, right? So the page did change, right? But the job, the content of the page changes pointing to version two now. Hey, the page says, I need script version 2.js, styles version 2.css, and cats version 1.jpg. The cache response says, hey, I got the cats version 1.jpg because it's cached right version one we cached it in the previous response here you go i don't have the others how about you server do you have them sure server says here's the new css and javascript 5 version 2 by the way cache those are also fine for a year 
and then cache says brilliant i'm gonna cache the version two and then page says thanks now later the cache will say hey i haven't used script version one and js and stars version one dot css for a while i'll just delete them so the cache always deletes stuff even before it actually expires i right? so to save in memory and and uh, disk space so this is very interesting right and uh, if you think about it you can essentially implement these things yourself or you can use a framework that actually does this for you the versioning aspects of this this is useful yeah? but you can think that you will end up with a lot of files what is the other approach? Pattern 2, mutable content, always server revalidated. The cache control in this case is set as no dash cache, which means, which doesn't mean don't cache, it means cache, but every time you want to use it, check with me, all right? So the content of this URL may change, therefore, any locally cache version is entrusted without the server saying no saying so the page says here there is another set of communication the page hey i need the content for about slash about and slash software.js so here you're free to update the same content right so software.js you can update it so that will be a brand new version of it but it's the same name essentially okay so the cache says okay i want software.js about and the cache says hey i can't help you I don't have any of these. The server says, yep, I got these. Here you go, cache. You can hold into these, but don't use them without asking. So the cache says, okay, I'm going to cache them. Thanks. The next day, the page asks for the same exact values, slash about, slash software.js. That's the next day. The cache says, okay, one moment. I got these, but I can't really hand, it, hand you these things until I actually check those, right? So the server, okay, I'm good to use my copies of these. My copies of about was us updated on Monday and software digest was last updated yesterday. So that's basically the concept of etags, which I talked about right here, guys, if you want, if you're interested to learn more. The, the idea of etags are or either would last modify with the date or you can use an etag like like a hash of the content itself says hey if this is have if this has been modified let me know so if, if it if they have if, if they, those content changed the server will say hey uh, this content hasn't changed feel free to use them and the response is so light it's essentially just say hey 304 not modified so the server will say hey software hasn't changed since then and the cache the cache will say hey page uh, here's the software.js right the server says hey about actually has changed because like i know you're up updating your bio all the time right so here's a new version the cache will immediately cache that version and keep it for itself the next time we'll use it and that's it all right let's read through this bit note no cache doesn't mean don't cache it means it must check or revalidate as it calls it with the server before using the cache resource no store tells the browser not to cache it at all also must revalidate doesn't mean must revalidate it means the local resource can be used if it's younger than the provided max age otherwise it must revalidate <laughs> Jake says, yeah, I know. <laughs> it is confusing, right? And then he talks about e tags, which I talked about. I'm gonna skip this here. All right, let's go through max age on mutable content is often the wrong choice. That Jake says. Here's where it can go wrong. So you might say, hey, must revalidate. If you said must revalidate and you put a max age of uh, 600 seconds here which is a 10 minute contents at url changes if the browser has cached version less than 10 minutes old use it without consulting the server right otherwise make a network fetch using if modified since or if none match if available so the e tag things things all right so here you are using must revalidate which means only revalidate with me after the content expire if if it's, it didn't expire, you can use it as freely as you want. And here's the dangerous thing. And here, we're going to the final communication between the client and the server. So here we're going through the final communication between the client and the server and how things can go wrong. So the page asks here, 
hey, I need slash article slash script.js and st st slash styles.css. The cache says, hey, I have nothing. Let me connect the server. The server says, hey, no problem. By the way, cache, these are fine to use for the next 10 minutes. All right. So for the next 10 minutes, we have three files. The cache gets them. The page gets them. We're all good. The page comes back after six minutes. So those three didn't technically expire. But here's what happened. Because we cannot guarantee that the browser will toss any of these caches at any time, right? You don't know how did the browser does their caching algorithm, least recently used or whatever. Right? It could cache, it could drop any of these three at any time. So here's what happened. The page after six minutes, again, would not expire yet. Hey, I need slash article, slash script.js, slash style.css, again, the same three files. The cache says, oh my God, I'm really sorry. I lost style.css. I dropped it. I discarded it. But I've got the other two. Here you go. Server, can you give me the styles.css? And you can see where things will go wrong now, right? You serve me two files from your cache, and now one of them are going through the server. The server doesn't know any better. It will give you that last file. And guess what? That file has actually been updated. The styles, the CSS is brand new. Now you just hit the server. You didn't ask it to bring everything. You just ask it for to bring that. Now the style, the CSS have a bunch of deleted tags or whatever they called, right? All these elements that are deleted. And now the page is broken as a result. And here's where things can go really, really wrong, right? As a result. So if I say explain what I just explained here, and then a refresh sometimes fixes it because usually when you refresh in Chrome on any other browsers, uh, the browser will ignore the max age and will always treat a refresh as a force refresh to hit the server to bring everything else. So a refresh might fix it, but that will just gives you the perception perception that your website is, is 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 flaky right which is bad then it goes through the service workers not very interesting here for me but um so here's a final point where uh, jake talks about uh, cdns right guys remember there will be usually your content you might have your content de delivered directly to your users but also most probably some people prefer that content management system actually caches them and when you host that stuff on your content management system right the cdn will act like a reverse proxy essentially it will be the terminator of the request coming from the users immediately and they will serve you your content but in order to do that this cdn must since it's a reverse proxy must turn around and connect to you on the back end on to your original server and there is a different set of rules here what does it mean now all of a sudden the cdn or the reverse proxy is a client and it, it plays with a different set of rules let's read through this blurb and then uh, let's discuss a little bit max age on mutable content is often the wrong choice but not always for instance this page has a max age of three minutes this page that blog that we're reading right now race conditions aren't an issue because this page doesn't have any dependencies that follow the same caching pattern so the previous example that we discussed right is we have this javascript file and then we have an html file and we have a, a whatever the css file they are dependent on each other so if there is a dependency the race condition can happen and as a result things can break if one of them got cached and the rest got a newer version right so you can go the immutable way where you can rename every single file differently but if you don't have any dependency you authored your script so that they have no, no dependency then you're safe actually to cache which and the better the, ca the the more you cache the better your performance of the site so the, see a lot of people say that front-end engineering is is easy this stuff is not easy by any chance because the browser is the biggest front-end app on existence if you think about it right that stuff is not easy right yeah we might be building some apps using react and stuff like that you're using existing stuff but the actual front-end if you think about the experience and all that stuff it's tough right look at curl curl as a command line is also a front-end app 
believe it or not it's not easy stop saying that front-end development is easy this pattern means if i'm lucky enough to write a popular article my cdn cloudflare which is a uh, uh, jx uh, cdn can take the heat off my server as long as i can live with it taking up to three minutes for articles to update to be uh, to be seen by the users which i am so in this case he says okay max age is three minutes and i don't have any dependency plus i'm good if i update something yeah the the, the clients will not check with me for three minutes and when i say clients here i mean both the browser the end user client and cloudflares themselves as a client to jake's server right because they are two different clients proxy revalidate that's a different thing you can add a proxy revalidate where is it let's just go here proxy revalidate so that the end user doesn't do this checking but cloudflare as a proxy does the checking with jake's server i keep saying jake's server you get the idea though right so you get the idea here in the back end we want the cloudflare which is the cdm to check with the uh to the server every time it's expired but i don't want it to do it in the front end at least I, this is what i think it's for you, used for i might be wrong though used correctly caching is a massive performance enhancement and bandwidth saver favor immutable content for any url that can easily change otherwise play it safe with server revalidation which is the dash no dash cache right only mix uh mac, max age and mutable content if you're feeling brave and you're sure your content has no dependency or dependent that they can uh, dependence that can get out of sync 72 comments wowzy obviously a lot of some people don't want cdns and cloudflare and and the cloud flares and and layer 7 reverse proxies to see their content because that's the only way way they can cache right in order to cache i gotta see your content and just like that you don't have end-to-end -end encryption experience between your users and and your origin server if you put a cdn on top some some people are, are not comfortable with that some people are fine obviously hey it's just HTML. it's my blog it's already public who cares but you gotta careful with the with cdns when it comes to what they should see what shouldn't they see or obviously at the end user they will be terminating the tls and re-encrypting everything on the back end right all right guys uh, i'm gonna reference this blog below uh check jake's content out uh jake uh, as uh, as always uh good stuff really like his content and uh follow him on twitter good stuff and then check out his show with the surma really good stuff all right guys i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye